image is iconic. A long-necked Brachiosaurus, peacefully munching on treetops, its immense body a testament to the grand scale of prehistoric life. We call them gentle giants, serene mountains of flesh moving slowly through a lost world. But what if this gentle giant was a lie? What if we are witnessing a version of history that has been softened by time, and the truth was far more terrifying? Imagine an alternate timeline, where the laws of evolution took a slightly different, more violent path. In this world, the sauropods, the largest land animals to ever exist, were not peaceful grazers. They were fiercely territorial, brutally aggressive, and their most defining feature, that impossible neck, was not a tool for feeding. It was a weapon. To understand this shift, we must first reimagine their anatomy. In our timeline, the sauropod neck is a marvel of biological engineering, a lightweight structure of air-filled vertebrae designed to reach the highest branches. But in this world, it is something else entirely. The vertebrae are dense, solid bone. The neck is wrapped in layers of muscle and sinew thicker than an ancient tree trunk, turning it into a colossal, flexible club. Along the spine and neck run rows of bony plates, or osteoderms, creating a form of natural armor, protecting the creature from the very weapon it wields. Their temperament is also transformed. Driven by a hyper-aggressive territorial instinct, these sauropods view any creature their size as a direct threat. Mating rights, feeding grounds, and even simple proximity could trigger a battle of unimaginable scale. Picture a clearing in a Cretaceous forest. Two bull brachiosaurs confront each other. They are not posturing, they are preparing for war. The air fills with deep, guttural bellows that shake the ground and send smaller creatures fleeing in terror. The aggressor makes the first move. It lowers its head and swings its neck sideways, a 30-foot, 20-ton bludgeon moving with terrifying speed. The sound is not a crack, it is a thunderous explosion as bone and muscle collide with the flank of its rival. The impact pulverizes flesh and shatters ribs. Trees in the path of the swing are snapped in half like twigs. The ground itself trembles under the force of the blow. The rival stumbles, but retaliates with its own devastating swing. This is not a graceful dance. It is a brutal, earth-shaking brawl between living siege engines. The loser is not simply driven off, it is often maimed or killed, its colossal body left to be picked apart by the world's newly designated cleanup crew. And what of the great carnivores? What is the role of the Tyrannosaurus rex in a world ruled by these titans? The T-Rex, our ultimate predator, would be utterly dethroned. No single T-Rex, or even a small pack, would dare to hunt a healthy adult sauropod. Attacking such a creature would be suicide. One glancing blow from a Brachiosaurus's neck or a Diplodocus's tail would mean instant death, its powerful skull reduced to fragments. Instead, the carnivores would evolve into opportunists. They would become masters of stealth and speed, preying on the young, the old, or the foolishly isolated. Their primary source of food, however, would be the spoils of the sauropods' wars. They would follow the thunderous sounds of combat from a safe distance, waiting like vultures for a victor to emerge and a loser to fall. The ecological landscape would be entirely different. Lush fern prairies would be scarred with massive, barren circles of trampled earth, the dueling arenas of these giants. Forests would not grow dense and old, but would be constantly cleared and pulverized by their battles, creating vast, open shatter plains. The very geology of the land would be shaped by their violence. Now consider the Diplodocus, famous for its whip-like tail. In our world, it's theorized this was for communication or defense. In this timeline, it is a precision weapon. The last 10 feet of its tail, reinforced with fused vertebrae, could be accelerated past the speed of sound, creating a deafening sonic boom. But instead of a warning, it's an attack. A pack of smaller predators, like raptors, foolish enough to swarm a young Diplodocus would find themselves in a storm of supersonic lashes. Each crack of the tail could flay skin from bone or shatter a skeleton instantly. These sauropods are not just animals, they are forces of nature, living hurricanes of muscle and bone. Their reign would redefine the concept of an apex predator. The food chain would not be topped by the creature with the sharpest teeth or the keenest eyesight. 
it would be dominated by the creature with the most sheer, unstoppable mass and the aggression to wield it. The very air of the late Cretaceous would be thick with tension. The distant, ground-shaking thud of a sauropod footstep would not signal a passing giant, but the approach of a potential disaster. Every rustle in the trees, every tremor in the earth, would be a warning. This wasn't a world of hunter and hunted in the way we understand it. It was a world of titans and everything that learned to live in their devastating shadows. The gentle giant is a comforting image, a glimpse into a world of peaceful majesty. But perhaps it is a fantasy. In this alternate reality, the ground shakes not from the footsteps of gentle giants, but from the thunderous impact of their blows. The true king of the dinosaurs was not a hunter. It was a living, breathing fortress, a territorial behemoth whose neck was not a tool for grazing, but a colossal mace that crushed all who dared to challenge it. 